Yes, this is Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, released by Capcom in 2005, I think. I could check. It's basically a courtroom simulator, and I use that term in the loosest possible way. Because this is a game that does not take itself too seriously. Considering at one point, considering you can see cool spirits from the dead to testify in court. <laughs> it's not really serious. And it's it, it's no, it's, it's no dialogue. It's entirely visual. I can't get caught. Not like this. <laughs> yeah. Also, it tells you the murderers at the beginning. Yeah. Someone like him. Yes. I'll make it look like he did it. Exclamation mark. So, yeah. I suddenly feel like I'm in a very bad 90s. TV drama. Look at that funeral. Daytime drama kind of thing. It gets worse because it's translated from Japanese. Um, <laughs> so you play as Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. Although in this game it's Phoenix Wright, not so, so Ace Attorney. Because he's young and just starting out. This is Mia, your mentor. Don't get too attached to her, that's all I'm saying. R right. The next case, just don't get too attached to her. Your mentor, Mia, who is wearing... Not the most appropriate outfit. I mean, she's wearing a corset under that jacket on. I don't know, yeah. but I can imagine why she might win a lot of her cases, though. Hey, I find me attractive. Yeah, so yeah. Actually, oh, Phoenix, yeah. I'm very tempted to just go to the, uh, what? Red Dwarf bitch. She's just a bunch of pixels. Yeah, just a bunch of pixels. She's not even that, she's hand-drawn. Sprites, what a game. It's all about my life, everything is... Yeah. Yeah, it's your client. Larry Butts. Oh yeah, every name will be a dreadful pun in this game. Every name is a pun. There are originally puns in Japanese, when they translate them, they keep the puns. So yeah, this is Larry Butts, who everyone thinks the name is, Her is, is Harry, so Harry Butts, get it? That's not the level of humor you have in this series. Oh, That's the level of humor you have in this series. But I love this series, it's hilariously funny. It's a courtroom drama that doesn't take itself too seriously. It has fun. Uh, Does it take itself so seriously at all? Slightly. I mean, there are, there are times in the games where they can get suddenly quite dark. And, um, and you know, if you are dealing with murders, you get to see the murders and explore the murders. But basically, you're, you're, you're paying Phoenix for right defense lawyer. Your job is to get the, your defendant, who is always innocent, because always, this is a video game. It would make no sense not to. Trying to get them off the case. Off the case, get them not really not guilty while facing. I wish they'll die because there's death penalty in this game. This game, game also takes place in J Japanifornia. Japanifornia. It's California, but it's because it's a game made in Japan. It's so Japanese. Uh. So it's set in America, but it's actually Japan. Well, in this universe, Japan is America, or at least California. So it's the boring bit. We get the actual case going. I know better. That's the really bad voice of Phoenix. Um, I'll do, I'll do Mia. Oh, well, I'm Mia. But no. I think you need to be the one to uh, do, I'm do, all, do, do, do all the, the voices. voices. All of them. I'm being here for today. Yeah. Look at the sprites. This is the judge. He's always there. He's also very easily manipulated. That's one of the pain. That's Phoenix. Look at that haircut. That is a haircut. And um. And that is sensible for some of you, Hey, that's good. Get his, the pun on his name? Mr. Wright? Yeah. You know that's a good pun. And yes, they, they make fun of the puns. They, this game is self aware. To its silliness. Someone, well, that doesn't make it quite so bad. Someone does keep calling him Mr. Wrong. Even though his name is Mr. Wright. The drudge who's very kind of. Yeah. Essentially, it's L.A. Noir before L.A. Noir. Set in the right. room. It's you. Basically, you a witness will testify something. You hear the testimony. You then got to either you basically got to prove their bullshit and lying using evidence or spirit mediums or it gets weird. And basically, it's basically trying to prove someone guilty or innocent using logic and thinking, or in Phoenix's case, bullshit your entire way through a court case. So he does that a lot. He bluffs a lot. And wins. And yet wins. 
Well, someone's got to work like that. Yeah. I think it's nice. He's very... In these early games, he's very paranoid and not very confident in himself. So, it's a bit Tutorials are really irritating. <laughs> this is a tutorial case, which is why it's the other play the game. The next one right. starts pretty much someone's dead from the get go. And there's a whole investigation that you do at the crime scene, find evidence, question suspects. And if you remember what they said, because when they often testify, they'll often change. So you have to be aware of what's going on, find evidence, talking to people, and then you get the court case. I'm here. I prefer it when she's front on. Me is fully attractive. Alright. Wait until you see some other characters. There is a character in the next case who quite literally bounces her boobs to Lil Judge. You're kidding me. No, I am not. This is Japanese. And it works. And then it works. Also, in this game, no one ever gets held in contempt of court and no one ever gets charged with perjury. You can lie. Well, the, you can the, lie. There needs to be some simplification. Yes. You can lie in court and the worst you'll get is a slap on the hand. Go, don't do that again. Ever get tried with perjury? There's, there's a live action film of this in Japanese, and it, is, and it is awesome in how ridiculous it is. Because in the courtroom they have holograms to show evidence. Holograms. It makes it, ma it makes law and order look boring. <sighs> yeah. But yeah. You can do. You should better do a judge. You can do a gruff. Up his own ass voice. <laughs> Also, the judge is not too bright, and he gets worse in each game. He kind of gets very, very dim. Or easily... I think simple is the word. Yeah, which well, does beg the question of how the hell he became a judge. He's, he's a bit of an airhead, he's like, ah, oh. You know, it's the actual evidence you have. The court record. Yeah. <sighs> when the actual case starts, it'll be a lot more interesting. But for now, we're just going through the... Yeah, it's me and the brain freeze, and we're back. Be sure to pay attention to the evidence that had during the trial. The evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. She's very high pitched voice from someone who's clearly your lawyer. Touch the court record button to check the court record frequently. I was just working in the real world. It's like, I, I, I don't have a court record button. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call his first witness. The prosecution calls the defense to the third. I'm ready. I'm doing. I'm. I'm. Uh, chief over there. Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get a chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh oh. Oh, yeah. In a, in a, Phoenix in, in a monologue's like Batman written by Frank Miller. <laughs> he in a monologue's like a bitch. Here's Larry. Do you want to be him? Uh, I can be him. <laughs> Mr. Butts, is it not true that your victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy. I'm doing like a surf, dude. We are great together. We are Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Antony. <laughs> he thinks that's brain. <laughs> See you there. Uh, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me. Ever. <laughs> what is it to you anyway? He's going to need it, Larry. And, um... Uh, Mr. Burst, what do you describe as generally... Uh, Mr. Burst, what do you describe as generally what we call being dumped? In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seen other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies, all of it lies. I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Um. <clears throat> Indeed, she appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way, dude, no way, hi there, dude, no way. Now Keanu Reeves. Whoa. <laughs> and, um, the victim was a model but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Now his brain just died there, didn't it? I am doing other things by playing this, which is why you get random pauses. Yes, all the men who gave her money and gifts. Great freeze again. Let's walk around with the music, it's going awesome. By the way, game, awesome soundtrack. It's really fucking like, she took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. We can clearly see what woman, woman this Miss Stone was. Let's put it pardon the first name. The word Stone. 
Tell me, Mr. Butts, what did you think of her now? Right. I don't think you wanted him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has to be... Oh, yeah, Larry has to wait, wait run his mouth in the wrong direction. Should I... Wait to see what happens, or stop him from answering? Stop him from answering. We know how he does this. <laughs> Mike, I has no idea... Blah. Questions are relevant to the case. Oof, wins. Dude, Nick, what do you mean? The cheating she-dog. I'm gonna diss. I die. I can't read. Yeah, and when I met her, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the Chief's move is clear to everyone. <laughs> yes, oh, quite. Oh boy, this is not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Yeah, did you? Did you or did you not? Huh? <laughs> well, maybe I did, and uh, maybe I didn't. That's a lot of court. Uh oh, he went. <laughs> what do I do? Help him answer honestly or stop him from answering? Ooh, 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 which one? Which one? This is me thinking. This is me thinking. Go ahead, should I have him answer honestly or not? I'm always a big one. I think it's stopping from answering, which I think he does, he does in a very funny way. My bench is it. <laughs> and you're on time. So how are you today? Yeah, not too bad. I'm good. I did have a seizure, it's fine. I um, was coming on the floor to it. Don't worry, I've been rectified itself, and I'm fine. It is... I will eventually. I'm probably reading something, or talking to someone. Or, yeah. or, or arguing with my cat, which frequently happens. Yeah. It's like I'm back in the game, literally throw the cat out the window. Ground floor window, before everyone gets panicked. It's a ground floor window. I'm not gonna throw him out of her. Walk on the soundtrack. Oh yeah, I have a monster honestly. I know, I'll send him a signal. Yes, telepathic telepathy. Tell the truth. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was there. I, w I wish that's changed every time I do it. Oh, there you go. Order. That's what you had to say. <laughs> well, Mr. Butts. Do chill. Do chill. She wasn't home, man. So, like, I didn't see her. Now he's high. That's an objection. Your yeah, well, defendant is lying. This game is over the top. Lot, don't you? Lying. I think you're lying to me. The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who was your witness? The man who found the victim's body just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Oh, yeah. Order! Order in the court. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> this is bad. Very bad. On the day of the murder, the, my witness was sending newspapers in, at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawit to the stand. Oh dear. Um, do you want to do his voice or not? Mr. Sawit, you sell newspaper descriptions, is this correct? Oh, uh, yes. Newspapers, yes. Mr. Sawit, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. So this is testimony for awesome music. Um. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there. A woman, not moving. Dead! I quailed and frightened and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment was working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1pm. The man who ran was, without doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Mm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. And the brain freeze over back. <laughs> Incidentally, why has, wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? You want at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawi used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your per perusal. More evidence added. Now, Mr. Wright, 
Yes, uh, yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> you may begin your cross examination. C -c cross examination, Your Honor? Yeah, this is. Alright, right, this is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why? You exposed the lies and testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Oh dear. Your client is innocent, right? Then the witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? Exclamation mark. You hold the key here, but it's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradiction between the court record and the witness's testimony. <sighs> then, once you have found the contradiction, contradict evidence, present it rub in the witness's face. Literally, almost. Touch the court record button and point out contradiction in the testimony. Okay, where is the court record button I even have on my desk? Cross examination, epic battle begins. So now you have to go through the statement, find the information out, and. Going... Oh, I won't bother reading Don't read this, I'll be going back and forth. So, yeah. Basically, you can go through each section of the statement. You need a press just to get more information out of him, which you, I generally do for everything, because it's useful. And when you find something that contradicts with your evidence, you object. You can read this, though. Uh, I don't know. He just seemed strange to me, that's all. Like he was mad and yet frightened at the same time. Look at that in. Just like a criminal fleeing the scene of the crime. Defense requests the witnesses refrain from conjecture. Of course, what would what this mean if the man he saw looked suspicious? So what happened next? And on the next bit of your, your bullshit testimony? I'll probably press it. No, no, I don't press that bit. I'm gonna look inside the apartment. I saw him lying there. We well, were not moving dead. My brain's to me, watch out. Oh, oh, motivation here. The phone in our apartment wasn't working. Yes, I mean, no, no, it wasn't. Right. But you said you didn't go in the apartment, or did you? Oh, oh, that? I can explain that. There was a cordless phone on the shelf in the entranceway. I reached inside and tried using that to call. And the phone wasn't working, correct? What happened next? Hold it. One PM, are you certain? Yes, absolutely. Hmm. He seems really confident. Time of death was Ah, oh, hello. One PM? Right! Doesn't that seem strange to you? Present some evidence to contradict him. And yeah, this is how you contradict things. Using her autopsy report, where her time of death is 4 pm. Objection! You found the body at 1 pm? You're sure? Yes, it was 1 pm for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts your autopsy report. Your autopsy notes the time of death sometime after 4 pm. There was nobody to. Uh, no body to find at 1pm. How do you explain this three hour gap? Uh, <laughs> mark. Oh, that? Oh, uh... This is trivial. The witness may have forgot the time. Josh is not happy. What is testimony? I find that hard to believe. Mrs. Arwitz? Why were you so certain that you found the body at 1pm? I, uh, well, I... Gee, that's a really good question. Good job, right? Why are you putting on the spot? That's all you have to do. Point out the contradictions. Lies have, lies always create more lies. See through one and the whole story falls apart. I'm pretty sure there's risking higher and more into it. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give him a testimony again? Oh, New testimony. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably caught coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a tape of a program. That's why I thought it was 1pm. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Let's rock this shit. 
Mr. Wright had a brain aneurysm at this point, I think. Uh, Mr. Wright. Oh, me. Yeah. Wright! That's all I have to say. Just right. You know what to do. I've got I've got this one. Okay. Are you sure it was television and not a radio? Well, no, I guess it might have been the radio. Incidentally, there was no radio on the premises. There's only one large television. Right! I can't put my finger on it, but something about this seems fishy. Something about hearing television. The witness is testified. He heard the time. Mm -hmm. I heard that. Let me see. Objection. Objection. Hold it right there. The prosecution said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery, and this record proved it. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. Gah, I... well, ugh. The defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sarwit? No, I... I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Ah! W wait, I remember now. Mr. Sarwit? to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That and you seem rather... distraught. Oh, my, my apologies, Your Honour. It, uh, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sarwit. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. At this point, you'll be charged with perjury. <laughs> In case not. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock on the, in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. More bullshit. I already know the problem there. You saw yeah. the clock. I guess that would explain it. <laughs> the defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. That's me as well, I think. Um, back to this. This strikes me as a very suspicious mistake. Yes, I can see how you'd be a little doubtful. I'm really sorry, I only just remembered that that table clock. A table clock? A murder weapon? Yes, a table clock, that was used as a weapon. That's what I just said. Did you doze off in the middle of my testimony or something? Probably. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was a statue. Now how is this supposed to be a clock? What? Heck, I can a remix. With you, with your objections and your evidence, just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sarwitz. Heck, the remix. Hey, I... I saw it there, okay? Your yeah, Honor, if I may... Yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. And it doesn't look like a clock. I submit it's a statue. My apologies. You see, the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it is that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony now? Yes, I do. Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock was to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he... went into the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah? Prove it. Prove I went in there. Better than that, I can prove you are the one who killed her. You struck her with a clock and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sowit. Good faith. 
place. The sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit her. The voice was burning in your mind. Then why? That's why you were so certain about the time. Wait, wait, Dad. What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face. This care to elaborate. Did you strike the victim with the clock? I, I, that, that day, I, I never. Look, I, the clock, I heard, no, I mean, I saw, saw. <laughs> shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. I hate you. It was him, I tell you. I saw him. He, he killed her, and he should burn. Burn. Give him death. You do a toupee at me. Order. Order in the court, I say. You want a moment, please? Here's the shit of evidence supporting the defense's claim. And you're right. Your Honor. You claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is right on this. I better think it through carefully. Yes, Your Honor. The sound Mrs. Salway heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... Try sound. Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. Beep! I think it's 8.25. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Pinky, tell me what time it is now. It's 11.25. As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between Mr. Sawit heard and the actual time of the death. So, Mr. Sawit. Try to talk your way out of this one. Ha! <laughs> you forgot one thing? Uh-oh, what's he talking about? While it may seem like that clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. Exclamation mark, he's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it, I was so close. It seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you suffer the witness. Unfortunately, this is the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sowett. I come all the way down here to testify, and look what happens. They treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lawyers are all slime. <sighs> I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it. I will go home and commit separate coup right now. Not so fast, Sawit! Mia, I mean, Chief. Listen up, Bright. Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think! But Chief, it, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time down the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out a reason and you'll have your proof. Right, right. Can you think of a reason why the clock would be three hours slow? Wait, maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. You say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder? Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course, there is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond doubt. Ha! Tough word. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. The victim had just returned home for a broad day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. Well, it's 4pm here, it's 1am in the morning. The clock wasn't 3 hours slow, it was 9 hours fast. The victim hadn't reset the clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck the dead or in the pocket was wrong. 
proof enough for you, Mr. Sowit? Or should I say, Mr. Did It? Nah. I'll get what the pun is now. Yeah. Oh, order! Order, I say! Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your client? He, uh, he was arrested and taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor? I have to say I'm impressed. You don't think I've ever seen some... I don't think I've ever seen someone commit a case like that and find the culprit at the same... true culprit at the same time. It makes you words up there, Judge. You've been drinking. No, the order of attention. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but... This court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts. Comes with confetti as well. Um. And with that, the court is adjourned. It turns out that Frank Selby was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people came out of town that day. When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sowery let himself in to do his dirty work. While she was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sowery grabbed the nearest blood object he could find. Always think of the X-Files whenever that happens. <laughs> Whew, I still haven't believed we won. Right, good job in there. Congratulations! Th 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 thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Yeah, Mia won this case, not Phoenix. Um, yeah. No, Blaze Tees. It's been a while since I've seen a trial and such a satisfying one. I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over! Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait, no, I mean... Bad, 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 bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. Ellipses. But my, my Cindy Windy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was a... Nah, never mind. Fill in the blank yourself. Congratulations, Larry. Harry. Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts. Innocent. Oh, oh, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this ever. Let's celebrate dinner, movie, my treat. Oh, no, no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off this hook. No, you're not. Oh, hey. Here, here, take this. It's a present. A present for me? Wait, wasn't this evidence that... That... Actually, I made this clock for her. I know we do. I made her one. Larry's Larry, Larry schizophrenic. Really, you? Well, thank you. I'll, I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And and she was just playing me for a fool. Don't it make you just want to cry? Larry. Are you so sure? E excuse me? I think she could talk quite a lot of you in her own way. No, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Do you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how he felt, she felt about him? Uh, oh, oh yeah, r r right, right, right. What the heck is she talking about? Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chum to her. Huh? Where'd you get that clock? This is the clock you made for her. She took it with her when she traveled. Hmm. She probably just needed the clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey Nick, I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little better. My job is done here. To the Batcave. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realise things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. Except the fact that this is a game, so by nature they're around to be innocent. And in order to believe them, right? 
Listen, learn, grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say how about dinner? Um, dinner on me. Drink a toast to innocent bucks. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Harry, you weren't saying the part but we came loyal was... Ah! Oh, you're part of yeah. You have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe. Oh, over drinks? <laughs> yeah. And That's so, just what you like, yeah. And so, my first check... Oh, don't worry, she doesn't... As I say, you don't get too attached to Mia. All I'm going to say is that statue comes up in the next case as well. Yeah. I don't know it, but that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. The end, dun, dun, dun. The end of Phoenix Rice. First case, he won. Well, Mia won. Yeah.